What's up, y'all? Today we get to talk about the second in the big three traditional Irish ornaments. The cut, the tap, and the roll. We already did the cut. Today we're working on the tap, and it's my favorite of the three, so stick around. Hopefully you've had some good luck with the cut, with the lesson that we did a couple weeks ago. Hopefully those are starting to sound like you want them to, or they're, they're an interruption between the two main melody notes that you're playing. The tap functions the exact same way. It's separating two notes, sometimes through a transition, sometimes it's two notes back to back, and we'll cover both of those. But you can think of the tap as basically the exact opposite of a cut. Whereas a cut, we're always going with the finger above, and it could be the finger immediately above, could be a specific finger you use every time. How you choose to do that is up to you, but it's always going to be a finger above the main note you're playing. The tap, again, is the opposite. It's always the note below. And that's one thing that's kind of nice about the tap. You don't really have to struggle a lot about which finger to use. It's always the same one. If you're playing the main melody note G, let's say, for example, right in the middle of the whistle, you're always going to be tapping with the F sharp finger. So it's going to sound like this. So you're using that tap to interrupt the note. To, rather than doing a tonguing effect, you can do it with your finger. Just like we do with the cut. But because you don't have to think too hard about what finger to use, I think the tap is easier. And I think it also has a nice, uh, more subtle effect than the cut. Which is another reason why I like it. So here's all the notes that we can do a tap on. And this is going to be our first exercise. We're going to play a D scale, just like we did when we worked on the cut we're going to play the notes that we can play taps on. In this case, we can't play a tap on the note D because there's nothing below us to tap on. So we're going to start with the note E. And that's your scale. It's not a scale in any kind of normal key, but it's going from the note E through the note C sharp because those are just simply all the ones that you can tap on. Now, bonus tap, C natural. You've got this fingering here, right? So how do you tap on that? Well, you can actually tap with the top finger. It's a cool effect and, and it's not always the same on every whistle. So that's one you can kind of test out and see if it works. Some whistles, the notes will crack. If so, no big deal. It's not something you use very often anyway, but it's an option if you want to. But just like with the cut exercise that we did two weeks ago, run this one nice and slow. And if it needs to be big, that's no problem. For example, just like that, no problem. If that's how you need to start, don't worry about it they're going to get faster with time. That'll come. That's, that's the easy part, believe it or not. If you just do these a few times, they'll start to sound really nice and, and clean. Because ultimately, that's what you're going for. That's kind of the sound that you want to hear. A nice short little blip just to interrupt two notes. Now let's take a look at working this ornament into one of our tunes that we've been playing. Let's use the Mountain Road, which we did last week. The basic melody again. And last week when I played that tune, I mentioned a couple of cuts. That's one way to play it, using a couple of cuts. We can also work in a tap here or there as well. So, substituting a tap for a cut, and you can do it on the beginning too. So they're fairly interchangeable, uh, but they're also handy when you're coming down a phrase. In the B part, for example, you could play. Just as the basic melody. Or. Just using those taps to separate those A's. Again, just an option. And that's going to be homework for today. See if you can find out some good spots in that tune and some spots in the other tunes that we've worked on, Jim Ward's and Dawning of the Day, and find some places to, to drop those taps in. Again, this is very much trial and error. I've mentioned that a few times. So try it. See what works, see what doesn't, and see if you can find a few good spots in on all those tunes. 
that might take advantage of this kind of a cool, subtle effect. Next week, we're jumping ahead to the roll, which is sort of the point of all this. That's going to be the one that will really sound like an Irish traditional ornament and make your playing sound like that. So stick around for that. I'll see you all next week. Cheers. <laughs>